Hello, I'm Jonathan Green. Welcome to this week's Car File. Now, last week we really pushed out the money boat when we brought you the top of the range 4x4s. Well, if you want a little bit more flash for your cash and you prefer to be a little lower to the tarmac, well, this week's show's for you as we take a look at luxury saloons. Definitely a big money show. There was a time when your car's badge alone was enough to let people know you were going places. The likes of BMW, Jaguar, Mercedes, they were all brands to have. But in recent years, the badge alone is not enough. You can get a BMW, a Jaguar, a Merc or a Lexus for under 20 grand these days. All great cars, but not exactly flash or luxurious. But there are some models out there that leave you in no doubt of the driver's success. The Audi A8, four-wheel drive, a V8 engine and enough leather to recover a herd of cows. The Lexus LS430, unbelievable refinement, build, quality and ride, and all the performance that any sports car would be proud of. The BMW 735i, as high tech as an airliner, a V8 so refined you can hardly hear it, and more toys than a crash. Now the total cost of our three cars is over 157 grand, so the likelihood of you having all three in your garage is slim. Note, the market for this type of car is as fierce as any, many owners sticking with one brand for many years. And that means it's important when you're paying around 50 grand for your motor that it's got to deliver. Now the BMW is the latest of our three cars to be launched in the UK. And although it went on sale earlier this year, it's still quite a rare sight on the roads. Now that could be either that BMW are trying to keep their new 7 Series exclusive, or that the buyers don't like the way it looks. It certainly is a radical look and an obvious breakaway from the lines of the previous 7 Series models. Very aggressive, very angular and very modern. I'm sure the younger executives will love this styling, but as to the old school directors, managers and golf club secretaries, I'm not so sure. And if you wanted any proof that American BMW designer Chris Bangle was obsessed with a kidney grill, you won't see any bigger than this. Those wheels are 19 inch. Understated? Not this car. But then again, I'm not an understated presenter. Maybe we'll get along just fine. Well, this car really is something different from BMW. As you'd expect, it's stylish, refined, and very classy indeed. But it's very high tech too and it grabs you as soon as you get into the car. In fact, from the moment you hit the start button and everything glides to meet you electronically, it really does take your breath back. It's even got a Formula One style steering wheel with four paddles underneath with various different controls, including the gear shift. But there's also different gear shifts as well. It's got three modes. You can go for regular, automatic, sport or manual. Well, at the center of this high technology totality is this. It's what BMW call the iDrive, and it's one large knob right in the middle of the console, and it pretty much drives all the electronics. Well, you probably need a PhD to be able to learn it all, and a year off to be able to do it. Having said that, in its defense, you can actually activate some of the functions by voice. There is even a clever little function where you can take notes for five minutes and record them. A useful little item for a businessman on the road. The V8 engine is powerful but very smooth indeed and so is the transmission and depending on whether you're on the automatic or the sport mode it doesn't really make a difference to how the actual car handles and in terms of its handling it's once again excellent. No fear of roll even though this is a very big car it handles superbly. No doubt about it when it comes to refinement the BMW is superb. Extremely smooth and quiet yet with good performance figures. 0 to 60 in under 7.5 seconds is impressive for a car this size, and the fuel consumption is better than many at 26 to the gallon. Something to bear in mind for those mammoth motorway sessions. I'm still not convinced with the central iDrive control though. 
You need to be on the ball to use it properly, yet surely anything that takes the driver's attention off the road can't be a good thing. For drive and comfort, the BMW really is superb. It's powerful, it's smooth, it's refined, it's everything you'd want from a luxury car, and it's very high tech. But to be honest, it might be just a little bit too clever for its own good, and those looks, well, they may not be to everyone's tastes. The Audi A8, on the other hand, may be the answer for those looking for a more classical shape than high tech. It's certainly one of the cleanest looking execs on the market. The all aluminium body is smooth and curvaceous, and you'd say it's understated rather than overstated. And though the shape has been around for a good few years, it doesn't mean there's nothing high tech about the A8. As we've said, that body is all aluminium to save weight. It's the only car in this class to have four wheel drive, and power wise, we have 310 brake horsepower V8 that will get you to 60 in under seven seconds. It's also the cheapest of our three cars weighing in at just under 50 grand. From the outside, the Audi A8 is one of the classiest cars on the road. And once you get inside, it's just as impressive. It's got typical functionality from Audi with no overkill. Style, exquisitely made, well built and it feels like a solid car from the double glazed windows to everything that's on the function dash. Well, like the BMW, it has all the goodies like the satellite navigation, automatic windows and seats, steering and transmission. But even though it's as big a car as the BMW with plenty of room for passengers, it really doesn't feel like a big car when you're driving it. This feels like a real young executive's car. It's itching to go fast at any moment. And while it's great for cruising down the motorways, you really just want to let it leap into action. It's the sort of car Colin McRae would drive in his retirement and really get some fun out of it. The residuals for a car like this, again, aren't high. It's got an aluminium bodywork, which is light and stylish, but if you've got a dent in it, it would be expensive and probably take a lot of time in the shop. The same is true of the electronics. Yes, it's got all the gadgets, it's lots of fun, but if they go wrong, again, you're going to be in the shop getting it fixed. And that means, once again, the residuals are not going to be high. Overall, though, it's the kind of car that if you were a businessman, let's say, going to Frankfurt, instead of flying, you'd drive. And on the way back, you'd take it through the Alps, just for fun. The A8 is actually due for replacement later on this year, but having said that, it doesn't feel dated. Like the BMW, it's smooth and powerful, but the 4.2 engine does give you more punch than the 7 Series. Build-wise, the Audi is stunning, and even though grey is the order of the day here, you still get a great sense of occasion behind the wheel of the A8. So, two very different cars in the BMW and the Audi. Cutting edge versus classic design. Now, later in the programme, we'll be reviewing the third in our trio of cars, the Lexus LS430. Now, one of the major problems with this class of car is horrendous depreciation. No sooner have you driven it out of the showroom than you've lost thousands of pounds. So the question is, why would you buy a brand new one? Well, we put this question and many others to our men in the know, the car salesman. People are buying these new cars as opposed to a used car nowadays in the luxury market because you know the history of the car, no one else has driven it before. Um, with the executive ranges in the luxury markets, if somebody's been driving it before, they used to tend to put a lot of miles on the car before they've actually go out. So people like to have this reliability factor, especially if they're using it for work. As there are more and more luxury cars on the roads, who do you think are paying for them? Are they company-owned cars driven by company MDs, or have a lot of them been paid for by people in the driver's seat? Nowadays, they have the options to either the company will provide a car for them or they will give them the allowance so they can go out and purchase their own car, depending on obviously what they want and their own needs. Um, nowadays, it seems to be more privately owned and people are just getting a car allowance. 
uh, and then picking what they want so they're happy with the car and then the, the companies will change them every you know three years or something of that nature. Well that's it for part one and after the break we'll have a drive of the Lexus and we'll take a look at Richard Hammond's alternative cars, the Jaguar XJR and the Mercedes E55 AMG. We'll see you soon. Hello, welcome back to Carfile, where this week we're looking at luxury cars. Now, before 1990, the Japanese were credited with making reliable cars, certainly, but luxury cars? Absolutely not. But that was until Toyota set up their prestigious brand, Lexus, designed to go head to head with the likes of BMW, Jaguar, and Mercedes. The first version of the car was the LS400, and this is the latest model, the LS430. Its lines are still very similar to that original 1990 model, yet with enough tweaks and subtle changes to bring it up to date. Like the Audi and unlike the BMW, it has a much more classical shape, which is reminiscent of the Mercedes S-Class. And those lines don't so much shout wealth and more whisper it across the table of a boardroom. And like other cars, the LS is powered by a super smooth, super refined V8 so there'll be no need to shout inside the car either. If ever a car smelt expensive, this was it. In many ways, the Lexus LS430 is the ultimate Japanese luxury car. And the Japanese can be proud of what they've achieved. They've got a tough job to try and compete with the Europeans, with Mercedes, BMW and Audi doing what they're doing. But they've achieved a lot with this car, and it really is, of the three cars we've driven, the classic luxury car. Like its European counterparts, it's packed full of gizmos, but its satellite navigation system is probably the clearest of the lot. It's touch screen for a start, and that's a big advantage. It's easy to see and probably the most user-friendly of all three cars, and that goes for all the gadgets in the car. And remember, you'd only be driving this car if your chauffeur was off sick. You could sit in a traffic jam for hours and really while away the hours and not be too perturbed by the fact that you were actually stuck in traffic. It is that comfortable. It's about as comfortable as any living room that I know. It handles better than you'd expect from the outside. In fact, it handles very well. It wallows around a little bit and rolls slightly in the tighter corners, but that's to be expected. It's a very big car. So at £54,500, the LS430 is the most expensive of our three cars, but it's the quickest getting to 60 in 6.7 seconds, and it certainly seems to have most of the kit. And while servicing costs are high, it's the lowest insurance group of our three at 17. Combine that with superb build, quality, space and refinement, and you have one of the ultimate executive cars. So that's our three luxury cars tested, all superbly built and hugely refined. And at the end of the programme, we'll be showing you their test scores. But first, if you like luxurious cars and you like to see them get off the line quicker than a Porsche, well, here's Richard Hammond with our alternative car test. The Jaguar XJR. Smart, sleek, stylish, leather-lined, expensive and exclusive. It's every inch the classic executive chariot. But underneath this smart, civilised suit, there lurks something more sinister. A snarling 4-litre V8 pumping out 370 brake horsepower. Mmm, 
So that'll give you 0 to 60 in a nudges over five seconds and enough road going attitude to satisfy even the most rabid of boy racers. And this isn't the only executive car with a secret. Look at this. They don't come much bigger or squarer than the Mercedes E Class. Check one, right to the sun. Right to the sun. Just born to grace the director's slot in the company car park and the chairman's slot outside the golf club. But this, like the Jack, has something kinky on under the suit. <laughs> This is the Mercedes E55 AMG, so say hello to five and a half litres of V8 grunt. Which means despite being bigger than your house, it'll accelerate from 0 to 60 miles an hour in five and a half seconds and produces 354 brake horsepower. It doesn't really hide its secret that well. 18-inch alloys, ultra-low profile tyres and twin tailpipes are a hint. And if you miss all of those, then like a pair of fluorescent socks peeking from under a tailored trouser leg, that AMG badge on the back gives the game away. Of course, the Jaguar, as you'd expect, is a little more restrained on the outside, though the signs are there if you look closely. Things like huge 19-inch alloys and a rather natty mesh grille. Despite all the souped-up shenanigans, it is still every inch a Jaguar. This is definitely Daddy's car. There's a real sense of occasion about it. I feel comfortable and capable of going extremely quickly. Mind you, I'm really not sure that those 19-inch alloys and rubber band tyres do a great deal to help the ride. It does feel a bit crashing over bumps and perhaps not as composed as the Mercedes. Right to the sun. Nothing this big should go this fast, and it's just as well that AMG put as much work into the suspension as the engine, which means it actually handles its boat pretty damn well when you consider it's built like a fishing boat. Well, certainly performance is the name of the game here. The Jaguar will sprint to 60 in amazing 5.3 seconds, that supercharged engine pushing out 370 horsepower. You need cash to run it though, big fuel, insurance and service costs. The same goes for the Mercedes. Huge 5.4 litre V8 here, delivering just under 350 horsepower in the usual smooth Mercedes Benz manner. Just the thing for getting German fat cats down the Autobahn, or for getting Richard Hammond to the shops, I guess. Certainly, two cars not for the faint hearted. And just to get the taste buds tingling even more, here's three alternative cars from the luxury market. In third place is the Mercedes S Class 350. No doubt about it, it's one of the finest luxury cars on the market with a heritage to back it up. With 0 to 60 times of just over seven seconds and a top whack of 153 miles per hour, this motor certainly isn't slow. And not only is it luxurious, it's quite agile, as well as making it one of the most rewarding execs to drive. In second place, we have the Jaguar XJ Sovereign. Like the Mercedes, it has tremendous heritage. It's one of the few cars on the market where the wood trimming in the cabin doesn't look tacky. Power-wise, you won't be left feeling left out as the 4-litre V8 will do 150 miles per hour and will get to 60 in under 7 seconds. But as with most cars in this class, depreciation is horrendous and you'll soon be on first-name terms with your local petrol station attendant. And so to first place with the undisputed king of luxury motors, the Rolls-Royce Silver Seraph. Forget cost, forget subtlety and say hello to unbridled luxury. World-renowned as the finest luxury car you can buy, the roller leaves people in no doubt of your success. It oozes quality from every part, and the fabulous engine of BMW V12 purrs along, even when getting you to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. Although the roller does have a poor level of safety kit compared to its rivals, the wool carpets, quality leather, and copious quantities of walnut will probably absorb any damage long before you've spilled your cocktail in the back. Well, it's time to get back down to earth now as we take a look at how our Audi, BMW, and Lexus have scored in our car file tests.
First up, it's style, and for this, we've scored the BMW three and a half points. It certainly is the cutting edge design, but time will tell if it suits everyone. The Audi scores four points here. Although the shape has been around for a while, it's still classically handsome and looks good standing still or on the move. And the Lexus scores three points. Although superb quality and design, its interior and exterior are perhaps a little understated for this class of car. You may have preferred something a little more like the GS430. On to performance, and here both the BMW and the Audi both score three points. They're both powerful, both fast, and both give reasonable fuel returns in this class. It's the Lexus that wins out, though. Any car that is big yet can get to 60 in a little over six and a half seconds is impressive, and it always seems to do it without any effort. Next up, it's handling, and here the BMW scores four points. Though we tend to take manufacturer's statements with a pinch of salt, this is certainly one of the ultimate driving machines. And although the Lexus is very smooth, it seems a little wallowy compared to the others, so that gets three. Full marks, though, go to the Audi, the only car in its class with four-wheel drive. It's safe, sure-footed, and solid at any speeds. And you've the added confidence in the wet that four-wheel drive instills. And so on to value for money, where the Beamer scores four points. Though it's too early to look at residual values for the BMW, you can expect that they'll be good for this car class, and at little under 53 grand, it fares well against the competition. The Lexus scores three and a half points here. Again, it's well equipped for the money and has a lower insurance band than the others, but it will cost you a fortune to run and will depreciate very quickly. Though not as quickly as the Audi, which scores two. It's also expensive to insure, expensive to run, and if you dent the aluminium body, expensive to repair. At last up, it's practicality. Well, they all score three here, as they all seat five in comfort and get the all-important golf bags in the back. The only problem you'll have is when it comes to parking up in town. These are big cars. So the total scores this week. The BMW gets 17 and a half, the Audi 17, and the Lexus 16.5. Now, although we've scored the BMW just slightly higher than the Audi and the Lexus, it has to be said that all three of these machines are wonderful cars and would make proud any golf course, executive car park or Hollywood driveway. But that's it for this week on Carfile. I'm Jonathan Green. We'll see you next time.